In this set of videos, I'll try to explain you this difficult topic on linear combination and spanning set with the help of simple examples. And with this one, I'm taking opportunity to understand along with you some very difficult terms. And before bombarding you with all these terms, let's try to analyze them one by one. And you'll appreciate that all my examples in this set are very simple and the only idea here is to get to know the subject and then do some interesting questions. Now this one is on linear combination and spanning set and says a set of non-zero non-collinear vectors can span all the vectors in R2. What do you understand by this statement? And that's a huge question. Now, at the end of the chapter also, I've seen students struggling to understand what did they do. Now, it's a good idea to start with, what are you going to do, right? So, that is the question which I'm going to answer right now. So, it says, a set of non-zero, non-zero vectors are, now let me tell you what are zero vectors. So, then you understand what is non-zero vector, right? So, zero vector, let me write, zero vector okay so zero vector in r2 when i say r2 what does it mean x y plane like i have here right so we have two components r2 means two components so the two components and both of them are zero then we say this is a zero vector so the point right here actually indicates a zero position vector now at this point, you really don't have the real direction. So the zero vector has a magnitude, and the magnitude of zero vector is zero, but direction is, some people will say zero, nothing. It is undefined. So here, zero vector is the one whose magnitude equals to zero, and direction is undefined. So that is a zero vector in R2. Can you give me zero vector in R3? So R3 means three dimensions, right? R3, when we say it will be 3D, X, Y, Z components, you can say, will belong to R3, a space. So there, the zero vector will be 0, 0, 0. So it has three components and all are zero. So that represents the origin in R3. So R3 you understand how it is. So let me draw a smaller one here otherwise this topic will consume the whole video. So that is well this one is R3 and the zero one is like this right. So we have R2 here and R3 there. So we understand hopefully the first term which is non-zero. So a set of non-zero that means a set okay let's get back to the set itself. So when we say set, then we will always put something over in these brackets. That means a set. Now in this set of non-zero, basically we are always talking about two vectors in this set, right? So we will write those two vectors normally in parentheses like this, which will always confuse you whether it is a coordinate or a vector. Well, you have to bear with me on this. It is like this, right? I will try to, I'm not saying I promise you, but I'll try to put them in these matrix kind of things at times and I will switch over to matrix wherever convenient, right? It's all about convenience. I've seen vectors is all about convenience and that is why it has become a very difficult topic for us to study. Now, so whenever you get like this, we are saying this is a set of vectors given to you and it is in this parenthesis, right? So these two vectors we're talking about. So a set of non-zero, we say none of these is zero. Remember that part. Now non-collinear vectors, non-collinear means not linear. Think it like this. So non-collinear, let me define this term now for you. We're trying to understand now what is non-collinear. Non-collinear means something which is like going in different directions, right? They're not going in, I mean, the same direction, right? 
Now there's this. These are all non-collinear vectors. But if you see kind of these two vectors, they look in the same direction. I mean, do you see this and this? They are collinear. Even if I draw a vector here, which is facing in the opposite side, but they are along the same line, then they are collinear, right? So all these three vectors are along the same line, right? So line extends in both the directions, right? So if you can put your vectors on this line or along the same line, then they become collinear. Otherwise, they are non-collinear, right? So that means we have a set of vectors which are not along the same line. Algebraically, we have a formula for this and that is we say the vector x is equal to, let me write vector x with this arrow on the head or a bar, sometimes bold, is equals to some constant k times vector u. If I write like this, then that means it is a scalar multiple, correct? Now scalar multiples are always collinear. So basic definition of collinear means scalar multiple and that means collinear, right? So remember like this, non-collinear vectors are one in which x cannot be written as some constant times u, okay? And if you can write, then it becomes a scalar multiple. All scalar multiples are linear or collinear, okay? I should use the word collinear vectors, right? So that is how it is. Now the second, uh, rather the third term which we are going to look into is can span. Read it again. A set of non-zero, non-collinear like these vectors can span all vectors in R2. Can span. Now can span means what? So that means basically you are writing a vector in the combination of the other two. That is what you're trying to say. So, so let us say we have one vector like this and the other vector is kind of, I'll just put it tail to tail here, like this. Then you will see that any vector on this page can actually be written or drawn as a combination of these two vectors. Let me show you how. Now if I take a vector, uh, let us say, let me take a vector somewhere there, right? Now to reach this vector, I can reach via this path, go parallel along this, and then via this path, I mean parallel to this. So first goal is parallel to this, and also let's draw a line here parallel to this given line. So you see, let's say this vector is u for us, and let's say this vector is v for us. Now from here to here, this much, this much will be some scalar times u, correct? It is in the same direction. So I can go here, from here to here, this vector can be written as, let me write this as a times that, I'm running out of space here, a times u, right? Now, so that is how I get this vector. And let us say our point was, which I lost here, let's say this is our point, okay? So we are trying to reach this point. So we go along u in the same direction. So that, that means a times scalar multiple of u will give me this point. Now we go along v, along v. So some other scalar multiple b times v will be this line and will reach that vector. So if we complete our parallelogram, we can now say that we do have a resultant, right? And that resultant shows the given vector x, let's say the given vector was x, I could now write, let me write here. So I could write this vector x as a combination of these two vectors. That means a times u plus b times v, right? So that is kind of how we say span. So when we say, now let's understand, a set of non-zero, non-collinear vectors can span all the vectors in R2, that means all these points here on our plane, can be written as a linear combination of the given two vectors. Then these two vectors can span all the vectors in R2. That is what we are trying to say. I hope you understand, right? So we'll get back to this topic again in this video and so many times in the following videos, right? So one of the best set to span is along 
x and y axis right these are always orthogonal perpendicular and if I take any ve vector here when I say vector here it means a position vector right from origin to this point so let's say this point is P I can write this as components of X and Y and if I go in this direction I say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this along this it is 7 but in reverse direction of I right so this is like minus 7 i for us now i go along y axis so it is 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 and this one is minus 4 along j direction do you see that so so that is how we can write p the vector as so we can write this vector p as minus 7 i well i should write equals to minus 7 i minus 4j so that is a linear combination so this vector is being represented as combination of these two let me take a vector here now for example right so this vector could be written as let's say point q now this vector could be written as linear combination of so let me write vector op right the so position oq this time oq is a position vector from here to there right let me draw this first for you okay great and now we can write this as we can go two units to left so which is minus 2i and then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 plus 7j so I can always write this vector q as a combination of i and j vectors which are unit vectors along x and y axis so that is the linear combination talking about so here what you notice is that these numbers a and b belongs to set of real numbers correct so they therefore this combination can cover all the points on this particular plane and that is what we say or understand when we say that i and j can span all the vectors in r2 now ij is a very very standard and a very convenient way and an excellent way of spanning all the vectors and we give them we say they uh, form the basis for the system Cartesian plane now we'll introduce the word basis later now the thing is, here is that the two vectors which we are talking about they should be non-zero non-collinear we are not saying that they should be at right angles do you understand that part they should be non-zero and non-collinear they can be at any angle so so if one vector is along x-axis then the other vector could have be along any angle not 90 degrees let's say let me make this vector like this right so let's say now I have a vector I'm just putting it along x-axis and I'm calling this as u and the other vector is let us say v as you can see they are not orthogonal orthogonal means they are not perpendicular but can I write <coughs> but can I write all the points on this plane as a linear combination of these two vectors that is a big question to answer so let's consider a point right there right so can I write this point let me call this point as X now if I write OX then O to X becomes a vector, right? O X. So can I write the vector O X as linear combination of U and V? That is, and let, we are saying U is this much, right? We are just saying this is U for us up to here and V is from here to here. So what we can do is, let's try. So we will go along V, for example, we can go along V, right? We go up to here. Well, that's it. Now we have to go along U. So we can go along U. There we go. And so this is this line is parallel to U. So we can write this line as a scalar multiple of U. And let's say A times U. Right? Since they are parallel, these two are parallel, right? So it is a scalar multiple of U. Now this big line from here, let's say call it 0 to a here now right so 0 to a is parallel to v and therefore this distance is a scalar multiple of v so I can write this as 
b times v, correct? Now, if these are my two vectors, then obviously Ox, that is here, is what? Ox is combination of u and v. So I can write Ox is a times u plus b times v, right? So I can always write any vector on my plane as combination of these two vectors, which are not at right angles, correct? So even if there is a vector here, for example, right? Then also I can go along this direction, correct? I can go along this direction here. There you go. That is along V. So scalar multiple of V may be negative. And then there you go. This is scalar multiple of U. So you get N of the times. Do you see that? So that is how you can write any vector in this plane. Let's say we take this vector. So scalar multiple of U could be something going in this direction. And scalar multiple of V will be something in that direction. Correct? So you could go further and then in this direction and get to this point. So that is how you can actually write any vector as a scalar combination or we say we call it linear combination. These are scalar multiples, right? In this formula, when we write vector x is equals to a times vector u plus b times vector v, these are scalar products, correct? So they represent vectors in the direction of u and v and their combination we get the vector which we want to and so we can write that vector as linear combination of these two. If you can do that then we say u and v span vectors in that plane. As you have seen with the help of two vectors which are known non-collinear and non-zero we can span each and every vector in XY plane, R2 plane, two-dimensional plane, we say that they form a spanning set. So that is the meaning of spanning set for us, correct? So let's now onwards think about these terms as so simple. One, a set is something given as a pair of vectors for us here now, most of the time in R2. And in R3, we will need three of them, right? So we'll need a triple in R, R3, right? Now, for R2, two. And for R3, we'll need three, right? They will span in, they can span in R2 also and R3 also. We'll see those things later. But important point here is, get to know your terms. Go through this video once again so that you can understand these terms. I know it's very messy. But if you go along it, you will probably understand what we're talking about. And then, one by one, look into my videos and get the concept. I hope that will be much easier for you and it will surely make this topic extremely interesting for you. Thank you.